I am the Red Cyclone! Ah! of the Aikis Paradise Square Podcast. I'm your host, Lee Deans, and I'm here with Rick with the mic. What is up? Sure, sure. This is our, our Red Cyclonix podcast about uh, pop culture, anything in between, gaming, music, movies, TV shows, life. You got it. In general. Mm-hmm. And sandwiches. Yo. <laughs> See... The Jinkies is probably in sandwich jail this week from what happened last week because apparently he went and got way too many sandwiches. There you go. And not enough people who listen went out and smacked him out of his head. Exactly. That's all you have to do. He ain't going to fight back. Mm-hmm. Jinkies is not a cry. fighter. He's just going to cry. Oh, that <laughs> delicious sandwich meat on the floor. Nah, damn. I want a sandwich now. See? <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And we're going to take a little break right here just to remind you to follow us on Tumblr, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Um, also, on SoundCloud, what we do is we have the Wrestling Babble podcast that's hosted by Mike with the Mic, who's a frequent guest on my show. And that should be on Mike with the Mic on SoundCloud. We post those on YouTube as well. So you can check the Mike with the Mic podcast out on his YouTube channel, which is also Mike with the Mic. And also, you can catch the It Gets Better Life Square podcast, as well as the various other playthroughs on the Red Cyclone YouTube channel. Thank you. Um, so let's start off with a sad note. Um, Poor Mag- Magasina. Um, he's the Red Wind... Ranger from Power Rangers Ninja Storm has passed away. Um, He was Shane Clark in the Power Rangers series. He was actually, I liked him as a Red Ranger. He was he was up there. I think he was actually in my top five. Okay, now let me ask you, when in the time, well not timeline, but when in the show's history is this show? It's in Power Rangers. Is he love season? It's from which one? the 11th season this is during the disney season. era wow okay okay and so who's i mean we can go a little bit into the show like just to say yeah. like who who was like the main villain who was the, what was uh, the, the, the style of thing like was oh so what's th- what made this one stand out from the other this, season so us going through like we do our morphing cast and we did we actually did review every single Red season Ranger, so yeah. far now we are actually going back into them and actually uh, giving them, giving each season its own take. Mm-hmm. So now we're taking our time. We're really looking at things and stuff like that. But when we reviewed this, this one was really high, highly regarded. Like this was up there with SPD space, and the well, the nostalgic purpose, the original. Okay. But um, I'll say up is up there with space and and SPD. Like it's hand in hand. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it was probably one of my favorites. It, it became one of my favorite seasons is the fact that one, there was not a lot of bullshit around it. It was its own story, so you didn't have a crossover. You didn't have nothing like that. It was a focus on their story. Okay, uh, cool. Two, the villain was badass. Uh, Master Luther was a freaking great character. He was funny. He was an asshole. He had everything you want in the villain, and and then the Rangers themselves, they were very great personalities. You had Tori. You had Shane. And you had Justin, which was the Yellow Ranger. This was the first one that didn't have a Pink Ranger. Uh-huh. Um, and this was the only series that had two mixed match Rangers. So you had three that was the Wind School. Then you had two that was the Thunder School, which okay. looked completely different than the other set. Like usually, they all kind of have a cohesive. Oh, I know what you mean. Thing. Yes, yeah, cohesive um, outfits. This one is the first one that actually had it separate. Wow. 
Oh, that's interesting. Damn. Um, it had some cool Zords. It had some cool villains. It had really good storylines in this one. Um, this is one I will say. Uh, in, uh, during the Disney, I say Disney had some of my favorite series seasons, and this was one of them. Mm, okay, gotcha. Um, and then you also had the Green Ranger, which was the Samurai Ranger, which he did some good Dragon Ball Z shit. So the Green Ranger, he had like this vest that supposedly weighed like mil- like thousands of tons okay so when he took it off he got more powerful and faster like kind of like goku when I mean, he took off the gi he was broccoli yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay okay yeah so they, they did a lot of things like that and um yeah so shane clark was the leader of the he was the first samoan uh, leader and he was the first samoan power ranger as well mm-hmm. um he is from new zealand where, where they actually do film power rangers and all that stuff as well um yeah. he was really loved well loved by the whole power ranger community yeah it's a power ranger family if you become a ranger you become a family within the big the big world of what power rangers is um sadly sadly he was a he was supposed to have a cameo in ninja steel and they 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 they, they, they stopped him which was sad uh, originally, Ninja Steel was supposed to team up all the Ninja Rangers. Seeing that the mm-hmm. Ninja Aquatalk Rangers wasn't really considered part of the world in a way, okay. that, that's why they didn't do it. Really? But wow. it was supposed to team up the Ninja, uh, well, the Kaku, Kaku Ranger and Super Sentai, the Hura Rangers, which is the Super Sentai of Ninja Storm, and then Ninja Steel wow. all together. And it's like that. But they didn't get to do it, which is sad. And it was a really big missed opportunity. Gotcha. But uh, yeah. yeah, he's a really good Red Ranger. He did uh, reprise his role in Dino Thunder um, for their team up. And um, yeah, it, it's sad that he lost. He was really young. He's like 30 years old. 30 years, yeah. yeah. And, like like and, I said, there was no, they said there was no you know, suspicious circumstances. So nah. it, it's probably just an unfortunate thing that just happened. Yep. Yeah. So uh, yeah, recipes, uh, poor Masagib. Masa- 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 his name so uh, Masagiva, yeah, Masagiva, Masagiva, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. you'd be miss, and um, yeah, watch Ninja Storm. Ninja Storm is a really good series, okay. It's up there with SPD, it, it, it's really good. I caught, see, now I have to be educated a little bit on it. Did that one have Tommy as a ranger or no? No, that was Dino Thunder. That was the one right after it. That was the one right after. Okay, so see, that's the, the one I saw when I got back into it. Mm-hmm. I caught that one and then SPD. They was. did team up with them though. Yeah. Okay. So that's why he seems so familiar. So you All did right. see him in Dino Thunder. Okay. Now let me ask you about that. Did that was that the continuation of that world? Since it was, you said it was, it was a brand new story. Um. So that one was kind of weird in a way because um, the way they did the show, the way they did the, it was supposed to be two parts. The way that Netflix did it, they separated the show. So one was first and the other one was second. Mm-hmm. Uh, one is that they got their powers back and did it. And then the first one was a different way. And they, they, they just confused the shit out of you, to be honest with you. Okay. Um, but the both team ups was fun. Uh, one, you didn't get all the Rangers. The other ones, you got all the Rangers. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yep. All right. So, okay. Again, unfortunate uh, circumstances that you Yep. But uh, he'll be missed, and his legacy will live on because yep. he's got a whole body of work of all those, like you said, apparently like groundbreaking that series, like yep. the, all the stuff you listed. That's a lot of big things for just one season. Yeah, and again, um, it was probably one of their stronger seasons. Um, probably one of the best ones they have overall. Yeah, and um, yeah, it has such great villains. It has straight ca- good characters. It has good character building. Uh, Shane was a good Red Ranger because a lot of the times we get kind of a bullshit Red Ranger. Okay. We're looking at you, Noah. We're looking at you, Mr. Fourth Red. You guys uh, yeah. sucked. <laughs> um, but it's rare when we actually get a really good Red Ranger that we see as a Red Ranger. Um, he's like the top. He's in the top five in my 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 picks. So. Yeah. Okay. Go cool, Vince. Yep. Yep. Um, cool. Yeah. Um, we still going through um, Mighty Morphin season three now for the Morphin cast this month. Um, that's brutal. Oh yeah, it's brutal. 
Gotcha. Tommy no, is KKK. Wait, no. <laughs> oh no, what happened? Because the White Ranger? Yeah, he looks like a KKK member. Oh, does he have like a white hoodie? Yeah. Man. I if mean, it was pointy. I've seen some that are pretty pointy. What I think about that whole color coded thing is wait a second. Does not just make it super easy to spot out who they are? At, yeah. what, at what point did they not have secret identities? Or um, they always... they, supposedly they always had secret identities. Oh, come on. You mean to tell me nobody knew? They always dressed in the same colors. Yeah. Oh, man. You know, that's that's one of those things that I still find weird because let me ask you because of Super Sentai and they're different um, do they follow those rules? Does that come from that? Uh, not really. Really? No. Huh. What that? Yeah, that's weird. Alright. Yeah. Super Sentai always changes the things. <laughs> like, Super Sentai is a whole completely like <laughs> it's night and day compared to what the main series is. It's just I always thought it was because they were following tradition of what came before it. But apparently, they just made that shit up by themselves. Oh, yeah. there you go. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So, <sighs> like, what's what's the worst part of season three? Well, so season three is just like it's it's bad. It's like it the bad acting compared, and then the mon- the only I guess Spoken Skull and and the Goldar and Rito I guess were my highlights of this season so far because they're funny. And they make it entertaining. Uh, Bulk and Skull become cops in this one. Really? Wow. Well, I well, forgot about police that. Police cadet, yeah. They get the haircut and all, and that was pretty funny. Um, this one was just the fact that um, Rocky, Adam, and Aisha are terrible actors. <laughs> Damn. Along with Billy, Kimberly, and Tommy. They're not great actors either. Um, it's just... Like, the beginning is very, like, Kimberly-focused at times. Okay. And then they start losing. You could tell when the time when they start losing Kimberly and actually in the main, on the main show. Really? Um, yeah, because uh, Kat replaces her. Oh, wow. I forgot all about that. You're right. Yeah. And then this is where you start seeing the creep Zordon um, watching people sleep. <laughs> okay, so you you and Tommy have a thing about, about Zordon. Oh, we hate Zordon. Oh, he, he, he's an ass. We, 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 Zordon sucks. Like Zordon, Zordon's the most useless thing in Power Rangers. Like he oh, he man. gives you the answer after you get the answer. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I kind of need to watch this again so I can catch that. So he's like, yeah, Zordon. Yeah, I suspected that all this time. I'm like, I just told your ass. <laughs> Fuck you, Zordon. Your big fat head. Oh my god. We, you know what? Me and Tommy have a thing is that we're counting down to Andros destroys him. Oh man, does he ever come back? No, and we're happy about that. Wow. <laughs> so we have a countdown to space when Andros destroys Zordon. Wow. And we can't wait. Actually, no, it's not even space. I think it's uh, Lost Galaxy. Okay. Yeah, no, it's man, space. It's no, it I is remember. Space. Okay. Like I remember the event when which one was what was it series three? I mean episode three, not episode. Geez, I'm saying like uh, Star Wars. I mean, um, it was it season three that had the part where they where they like lost. And, uh, like, they had to leave the 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 old headquarters. Which one was that? That was season two. That was season two. That was yeah. was that the going into the White Ranger? That was past after the White Ranger. That was after the White. Okay, cool. Yeah, and now they have the new headquarters and shit. Yeah. Um, no, no, no. I honestly, I think that's the beginning of Zio, that because is... there were there were kids, and they all had to get a damn Zio crystal, and then when they all got the Zio crystal, they were able to get the power. Now, how long until you get to that? I'm not looking for that, but that's the... <laughs> all right. So, <laughs> season three because is... I remember some of that. So season three is two seasons in one. So like, uh, well, Netflix considers it two seasons mm-hmm. you have all of season three okay and then you have to watch the alien ranger series which is like 10 episodes which is the it's the aftermath when they got turned into kids and the the, the alien rangers took over and started helping the rangers get the zeo crystals and stuff and get grown back up and that leads into the power rangers zeo understood understood and they're terrible <laughs> oh man. we hate kid actors they're terrible yeah they are pretty bad 
it, they're really bad in in Mighty Morphin. So it, yeah, it's really it's getting to a point that it's getting really hard to watch like Mighty Morphin. As it's not nostalgic purposes, the nostalgic part is not helping anymore. Really, like especially after watching Zoo Ranger, after watching Dire Ranger, and how better they are, it's like, damn, we could have had this, but America thinks we're stupid, and we had to get this. Wow. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's true. Zoo Ranger yeah. is better than a lot of what I used to see. And then you watch Dire Ranger, you're like, oh. <laughs> so okay, do you know is the Zio what is what's what's the Zio called again? Oh, uh, Zio Rangers. Uh, yeah, in Japan. Because like I want to know. Omi Magai. I don't know. I'll tell you right now. Okay. Because I would I would love to know like what what that one was was originally. I kind of want to know because that. I know since you said they 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 aren't all the same thing. Yeah, I do kind of want to know what the original story was. Yeah, I don't like I have we haven't got to that one yet, so mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. maybe like two months away. Okay. Um, because we are doing Kaka Ranger next, which would be the Alien Rangers the Alien Ranger. okay. America, and that's supposed to be the equivalent of season three of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Did you that's get started already? Like, um, what's your I, early perception? I like it. Um, it's cool. They do have ninja suits, but they're not like what we see on here. They actually look like ninja suits. So wait, that's another American creative uh, thing? The yeah. ninja suits? Yeah. Wow. That's interesting. Okay. Uh, so the next one is Koraki Sentai o- O-Ranger. Uh-huh. And that's which one? That's the Zio. Okay, that's Zio. Gotcha. That's Zio. That's um. That's after Kako Ranger. Kako and Ranger is interesting. It's interesting in America because they kept a lot of the same cast for both of those in the, in the American ones. Yeah. Zio and Ninja. But they just were there. But Zio, they actually changed the full outfits though. It's not yeah. the same. Like for the last three years, they had the same exact Power Rangers. Suits. Damn, Scott's gonna come with Avengers. He's like, yo, what's good? I'm gonna <laughs> get you. And then you have Ninja Ninja Sentai Kaku Ranger, which just to be next one we're doing. This is the one with the the ninja the ninja the Zords and with the frog, the wolf and shit. And then this also has the Shogun Zords, which honestly in the Super Sentai they're the opposite. You get the, they got the Shogun Zord first, and they got the Ninja Zords later. Okay, gotcha. As in in the American one, they got the Ninja Zords first, and then the Shogun Zords later. Uh and it gotcha. shows why there's no pink in the Shogun Swords. Huh. Okay. So in America, okay. they, they, they kind of had a, a cop-out of why there was no pink. Because Kimberly was supposedly losing her powers and shit. Mm-hmm. So was, they didn't keep her with the... She didn't get a Zord when she changed. She shared a Zord with um with Tommy. Yeah. Which, okay. was, the white, which was the White Falcon. And the ninja ones, it was it was no pink ranger. It was white, yellow, blue, black, and and red. Gotcha. Yeah. Wow, man. See, this is super interesting stuff. Yeah. Um, make sure you guys tune in to the Morphin Morphin cast. cast on uh, Michael yeah. Yeah. Uh, SoundCloud because there's, there's a lot more of this discussion going on with his his co-host Tenacious T. Yep. He's an asshole. <laughs> He's not worse than Zordon, apparently. We hate Zordon. We, uh, that's one character we clearly hate Zordon. Zordon like number one asshole. I'll tell you, man. You, uh, if I, it's a lot. But if you do watch the original series, I, I'll, I guarantee you, you will start hating Zordon. Uh, yeah. Well, the the amount that you say that Zach whines is like that would bother me. I stopped. I stopped. I stopped liking Zach too. Zach got into my nerves, and it's like, "Yo, Zach, stop being a little bitch." Like that just bothers me. Like, no, yeah, no, not this character. Yeah. Uh, what are you? Give, me, this give me one second. Let me close the store. All right, no problem. Um, and we'll just talk about what happened this past weekend because yeah, I don't know if you saw her. PS, yeah. PS, whatever. Sony, yeah, they had the they had a really big um, showcase. Was it yesterday? Yeah, and it was like trailers galore for uh, I guess a bunch of games coming out from now until I guess next year. 
Yeah. Uh, and some games that just don't have an announcement date, like Final Fantasy Seven, which the trailer they showed looks amazing, but no, man, man, nobody knows when that's coming. If that's if that's even on the PS4, <laughs> that will be an achievement. You get it when we done. Shit, you see, <laughs> this is why you don't let no more make things. Yeah. What I tell you? Yeah. See how long it took Kingdom Hearts to get a date? Like, oh boy. And even, even, and even when that day, we still was questioning it. Like, yeah, it better like be in for, the store. Like for serious people, <laughs> were like, is it real? Okay. Like, is it so, actually coming? Am I actually gonna get to play? It? Am I gonna, am I gonna play this? Am I can't picking this up Tuesday? Let me know now, so I don't waste my time. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So yeah. good stuff to him for you know keeping up that tradition. Um, Final Fantasy remake, Final Fantasy Seven remake. Excuse me. Yeah. Nobody knows when it's coming out, but it looks amazing. I, I like what they're keeping from the old games. I was telling you that like, you see Cloud do one of his special moves that leaves like this red mark on the screen. Okay. You know, typically it's an RPG, but it's it's a video game, so you can believe that that's just for a dramatic effect. But I love how in these because yeah. it's not going to look chibi you know yeah. what i mean so it's going to have the hyper realistic graphics and they're still doing like that ridiculous stuff with the the, the swishes in the air and whatnot and the kanji yeah. okay. and i'm like so if they're going to do that level of detail that means i'm that's gonna that's making me excited for it. like i think one of the things that gets lost in the popularity wars with final fantasy because every time somebody brings up what's your favorite one and somebody says seven Somebody has to say six, and then somebody has to say nine, and then somebody's like, "Well, you know, ten is is technically better than all of those." And then it's like, "Shut up, we don't care." What was yours? <laughs> Me seven, but that's yeah. mostly because that's yeah. the first one that it took my attention. Because the the ones on Super Nintendo and Game Boy, I kind of it it just couldn't hold my attention. I say mine's just eight. Okay, I like eight too. I liked eight story more, and I liked it the way it looked a lot more than I liked seven. Seven was really too like blocky and cartoon. Yeah, it was the first the first three D one, but like yeah, that that one had so much. It was a quirky ass game because people think it's a real dramatic story, and I think that's the whole thing that Advent Children didn't remember. Yeah, was that you know like all those other characters that helped him get to the top when they were fighting the summon. Like they had personalities and then half of them were just like goofballs yeah and so that's kind of what i think is lost when everybody starts talking about favorite final fantasies like yeah yours might be that one but can i just tell you why i like the one i like yeah so, so you tell and tell me why yours is better than mine? you know but that's what happens you know what i mean yeah. so people are like oh cloud sucks because x and then oh sephiroth he's overpowered because x I hate that song because it's, it says his name. Like, how hard are you gonna put him over? Just shut <laughs> up! Tell just, in, just could you just go over <laughs> to your side and enjoy your Final Fantasy in your corner over there? Because exactly. it doesn't matter. It, it, you know, at the end of the day, when you die, which which one was your favorite? It, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you gonna put that in your tombstone? I love Final <laughs> Fantasy VI. Who gives a shit? Shut up. And I didn't have a Super Nintendo anyway, so there you go. I didn't have one either, so I didn't play none of the NES ones at all. And then I bought, I went, I tried to do my due diligence, and I yeah. bought the collection that had six and yeah. Chrono Trigger, and it, well, because it was the American Three, because of that whole, I don't know, that number thing that Japan did. Yeah. Like they're not numbered properly, so three is the one that I think is supposed to be six over here. It's weird. And then there's the one that has uh four and five yeah and those are just so old school i can't even i can't like i tried to do i tried to play it with a friend of mine and i only got but so far was off before internally i was like i can't do this to myself i can't, I can't. The, honestly i liked it like uh, if it goes to the snes ones i liked it uh chrono trigger way better than final fantasy <laughs> See, and I bounced off of that too. I fell asleep because I was playing at the wrong time of day. Because I was playing it after work when I used to work in the Pokemon. It was like, like eleven at night. Yeah. No, and I still gotta you know get up at fucking six forty-five or something. Yeah. But it's just like I I tried to get into Chrono Trigger and just I fell right to sleep. <laughs> so that I have to go. I would have to do my homework on that one. But 
the older Final Fantasies on Super Nintendo, they just, I don't know. Seven just hit me in the right space. It was like, it was goofy enough. Yeah. And because I don't really like all the serious games. I don't, maybe it was just the age, because maybe it was like 12 or something. But yeah, I think maybe 12. Yeah. Mm, 97? Is Final yeah. Fantasy 7? Yeah. So, 96, 97, yeah. Yeah, because PlayStation came out in 96. So 97, yeah. So it was like 13. No, 14. There you go. So it was 14. So I guess maybe it just, it had a, like it had the main character in a dress at one point. And then like you had to do this, this weird thing to get inside of like a brothel. Yeah. To get a key, to get up to like, to Midgar, because you can only get to Midgar if you had money. Or if you had like connections and shit, and just so you had to go through this creepy dawn. There was just like a whole thing where you ended up in this weird, I don't know, like it was a bunch of muscle dudes yeah. taking pictures. It was like, but it was all blocky and stupid. You know what I mean? So you can't tell exactly what's going on. You have to like intuit from these kind of really bad 3D models. <laughs> but the story was written well enough in English, which is also just like, that's kind of a weird thing if you think about it that all the humor and stuff kind of translated because normally there's a bunch of like weird japanese stuff that doesn't go over but like i don't know i thought it was funny um and yeah sephiroth was emo but who cares he was emo before that was a thing yeah man that's when they started getting the emos during that time <laughs> 97 that wasn't emo 99 was emo 98 99 that was 97 like, was grunge it was like the ending of grunge. yes ps2 was the emo era i'll put yeah. it that way so 99 i think yeah when did fallout boy come out come on like 2000 see there you go um yeah it's uh january 31st 1997 97 see? yeah yeah um i did not to mention i had the strategy guy because i think my uncle had it <laughs> so i tr he no, no, I bought it. I traded him the strategy guy for Castlevania Symphony of the Night, and that's how I got that key. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to borrow the book because after he let me borrow it to play it, I got yeah. into it. I bought the book. I beat it. Yeah. So when I gave it back to him, he was like, "Let me borrow the book to beat it, and I'll let you borrow Symphony of the Night." And that's a whole other thing. It's just funny. <laughs> so those two games basically made me fall in love with them. Those were the, I guess those two were like part of the top. PlayStation games. Yeah. With that era too. Except the night, um probably Gran Turismo too. With the top. I couldn't get into it. I, I couldn't I get tried. into Gran Turismo too. I, I tried. I got into I failing the test. I kept failing the test. I got into Forza Horizon. I never got into Gran Turismo, but Gran Turismo was the, the highest selling PlayStation game of all time. I know, because everybody thought it bought it and they thought it was gonna be cool and guess what? It wasn't. It oh, just wow. looked nice at the time. Do you wanna see the uh, have the top ten PlayStation console games? Of okay, all go time, ahead. Gran Turismo, the first one, Final oh, Fantasy VII is number two. Gran Turismo Two is number three. Tekken Three is number four. Harry Potter and the, the Philosopher's Stone is number five. I believe it. Tomb Raider is number six. Final Fantasy. Which one? Wait, hold seven. on, hold on. Which Tomb Raider. Raider. Tomb Raider. The first one. Tomb Raider. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Final Fantasy VIII, number seven. Crash Bandicoot, number eight. Tomb Raider Two is number nine, and Metal Gear Solid is number ten. Wow. Which which number was Crash again? Number eight. No, which number Crash? One or uh, two? One. Yeah, Crash Bandicoot one. Crash Bandicoot, wow. Yeah, because you know what? I remember we had, when we first got our PlayStation, we yeah. had the, what do you call those? When they sell a million from back in the day? Yeah. It used to be like oh, the a silver hit. disc. What greatest was it called? Hits. Greatest hit. Yeah, so we had the, we the had greatest the hits Crash Bandicoot. Orders when Crash Bandicoot 2 first came out, like that's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> so yeah, I, eh, that's true. But like, you know what? It's, it, it was just fun. So the I'm looking forward Warzone to it. Warzone is number 36. That game, you know what? It's not that bad, but it looks terrible. It ages, woof. And SmackDown 2 is number 46. Oh, I love that game. I love that dumbass game. That was such a stupid game um see i don't know that's why see you brought up a whole thing right talking about these these playstation games man 
a lot of these games are still better than some of the stuff we got now that's the sad part yeah i'll take those smackdown games over the the, the new 2k stuff it might look better but like i've missed the personality they had that's so no much mercy over everything this is true <laughs> but if i had to i was just like those made me laugh yeah because the they put so much yeah yeah the storylines were really good like really silly yeah anyway um i look forward to whenever final fantasy 7 remake comes out Hopefully um live well. yeah uh <laughs> it's probably gonna be announced as a last like last game for ps4 slash yeah. first game for ps5 i can see that um but like i was gonna bring up the the things that came out last week about people at certain studios starting to talk about crunch in a big way yeah. where they're saying it's making it really hard to work on these games and did you hear the mental toll it takes on the people yeah i hope they take this sweet ass time and make it good because mm-hmm. i'm tired of hearing these stories like but then again you don't hear them come out of japan so either they're not talking about it or they it don't do it, it. <laughs> the only person who does it and you hear from it is sakurai the guy that does smash because he refuses to like make a shitty game so yeah because even we are mortal like took a step down from going crazy with these games as that's well. true that's true. he don't put all his effort he he, he has the schedule and stuff like that mm. or maybe just americans are little bitches <laughs> <laughs> nah, i don't know you got to but then you again, also when you me. when you do these games, you you sign a contract. Yeah, and it's not like you're getting paid by an hour or things like that. No, you sign a contract, and you are expected to do these things within that contract. And honestly, if you don't read the contract and you sign it, then you put yourself in that situation. <laughs> the the thing is, like they they gotta be careful what they do. Yeah, because they they're putting. Them- they're putting everybody in a position where they're like they're gonna unionize and like that's what they want yeah and those the people who used to have the stronghold they're gonna be the ones that are like oh damn this whole thing is coming crashing down but it's like you could have found a way to avoid this by listening to the people that work for you like it doesn't have to be regulated by everybody else you guys could have regulated yourselves in a good in a better way but they chose not to do anything mm-hmm. you know what i mean so i don't know I think in that respect, they could kind of learn something from wrestling, yeah. from expanding so big, but basically regulating themselves because they they only have like the guidance of whatever the the, the government's drug, you know, drug enforcement is. But for the most part, they understand how to conduct themselves nowadays, yeah. in a way where they're not crying about business practices. Maybe they don't like creative direction. You can listen to that on the Wrestling Battle podcast. Yeah, but. The, the gripes aren't saying oh they treat me unfairly you know what yeah. i'm saying so in that respect they, they they really should just be listening to the people who are making the games when they say they have issues yeah so they don't make this public like that's how you that's how you keep your that's how you keep your business to yourself you know that's how you keep your things your ship sailing smoothly is listen to the people working for you so you can you know make them feel better so they can make a better game Etc. Yeah. Etc. They're just killing them to put out DLC. Yeah. So, I don't know. and now it's getting getting looked at in a lot of companies. A lot of them. Yeah. Another problem is having issues. Never wrong. They have uh, people are saying that crunch the crunch thing is a, is is happening there too. Yeah. And then there's going on another one. It was it's even worse at Riot Games. Like the workers walked out a few. Not the whole thing, because apparently they have like two thousand employees. So the whole thing with Riot Games made sense is the fact that the honestly the management was actually like, okay, go ahead, walk out, so we can get these things done. Yeah, they needed they needed a spectacle. Yeah, but they, they, needed, they also they needed the people to, to voice out the stuff, to air out the grievances, to get it out there, because they would apparently they were trying to put some con some type of not a contract a. Yeah. They were trying to put something in place where you could only talk about the issues in house. Yeah. But if it was something that usually would go to court, you you would have you would sign away your right to go to court. Yeah. And that's the thing that did a lot of people were like, that's not that doesn't sound right. 
Yeah, and then there's also harassment and things like that, and that's something that you not you can't have that. Yeah. Especially yeah. nowadays in the workplace, you can't. But just like yeah, they just like that's the whole that goes back to the whole thing. If you want certain people working with you, you kind of put them make them comfortable, not just mess with them the whole time. You know what I'm saying? So why don't you have a great work environment and you having a great work environment has people positive about being at work? And they make so much money, dude. Yeah. Like how you can't make everybody happy? I thought that was supposed to be the solution. Dude. Yeah. You know, when you they did a League of Legends people, man. Like not League of Legends, excuse me, excuse me. Riot Games is totally different. Yeah. Um not just that. I wouldn't just say just that. They make that, but they make a lot of stuff. Yeah. But the thing is they make a lot, a lot of money and you would think they would understand that having unhappy workers when you're that high profile is really bad. Yeah. You would want to be one of the places that like I would rather hear stories coming out. Yo, it's hard to work there because it's mad strict. Yeah. You know, you can't fuck around. You you get like a black record on you know, mark on your record, you're out. You get caught doing this, you're out. This you that you're out. in the kitchen, that's it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But I'm saying like <laughs> if you were one of those managers harassing women or something, you would get the boot because one somebody said something, you would go instead of them hiding. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That shit don't work. Don't it's it's over, it's a wrap. Cut that shit out. You know what I mean? So we'll see. I mean, but like I said, hopefully these people pushing for this, maybe they'll get what they want. They'll get a union. Or or they'll come together and find out how to make this work in house. Cause y'all making it public is not a good look. That's all yep. I'm saying. And I don't want to feel bad about the games I buy. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's the other thing. You like, yo, that game was a five, was a nine out of ten game. But guess what? It took nine out of ten souls too. And you yeah. like, damn, son, I didn't need that. Yeah, you know. So hopefully everybody gets their shit together. Yeah, take your time, do you? I mean, I understand. I would like a game, a from a particular franchises as soon as possible. But realistically, I don't need it like tomorrow. Yeah. So when I hear them people pushing back a game, I'm like, why did you even announce the first date? Shit yeah. Or oh, have have a have a, a far release date and then edit that release date while the game is getting done. So say for instance, I was like, oh my game is coming out like 2020. But mm-hmm. in fact, we probably finish in 2019. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the people would be more happy. Like, oh shit, they're pushing it up. Good for them. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. I don't know, but like I said, I don't want to feel bad about the things I play. Yeah. So. Yeah, I remember when Deadpool, the Deadpool game came out, a lot of people were like, oh, you know how shitty the studio and how they were treating their employees. I'm like, man, I just want to play the game. Yeah. Fuck alone. <laughs> yep. See? Yeah. And even back then, so, so you see how long it's taken for it to, yeah. to catch traction? Because I was with, um, with High Noon Studios. Yeah, they were the Transformers people that made those yeah, cool yeah. games. Yep, yep. What and was it? It was like it was rushed. Is that why Deadpool was like the way it was? Yeah, it was rushed. The first and then, one, and then a lot of the dev team left. Cause I know, did, but didn't they get to finish finish it up better when no. they re released it? No, no. It was just a shinier game. It was the same oh. mix. Yeah. Oh, I thought they did some. some oh, I thought they had to do work. Oh, damn. No. And like, are they still around? Or did they get shut down or something? Uh, they they got shut down after Deadpool. Wow. And who was that? Because that on the disc that was Activision. A- oh shit! Damn, son, Activision. It was Activision and High New Studios. And High New Studios it was a really good studio. It was a very up and coming studio. They actually had some really good games under the belt. They, they had a reputation. They had a good reputation. They made Transformers a great multiplayer freaking fighting um, online game. Mm-hmm. I got to play. I think it was the, 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 the I think it was the third one. And they, they did two. They did two. They did the, the, the Cybertron. War, the War for Cybertron, and I think the War for Cybertron was the second one. And they did the. There was one after that. The one before that. So who? The one, the one with Grimlock in the end. That's uh, the second one uh but okay there was a there was another game after war for cybertron who made that 
not the not the platinum one. There was another actual. Um, every the, every other game was made by the, if it's movie oh, based. Oh. Yeah. So there was another game that was made by different. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, I'll tell you right now. The high noon. It was War for Cybertron, and then the Fall of Cybertron. Those were their two games. So I think I played the second one. The, and then, the yeah, and then everything else was made by other companies, and, and that was on 360. That was on 360 and PS3. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So. Uh, you can actually play. You can actually buy them on PS4 and Xbox One now too. Really? Yeah. They really. They, they didn't really re do much to them. It's just honestly, it's just a game, really. But um, the rest of them were done by were, were for the movie, and they were done by they're Russian, done by a different company, which wasn't that great. Got you. Okay, I understand. But I new studios won't. Yeah, I actually, I I really want to play these games again. I may actually end up buying them for the you know. um the the reason I actually give them high price because when I play the games, the, tra the transition from robot to to vehicle was like seamless. It was fucking amazing, and and you could just get right into the fight. Yeah. yeah, it was really really good. It played like uh, Unreal, like it had the the gameplay of Unreal with just. And were, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I was gonna, I was, gonna, I was about to say in the vehicles, it almost felt like Twisted Metal. Yeah. Like, a, like if this was the evolution of a Twisted Metal game where you could go into a uh, a robot, I'd be like, yeah, I get that. Um, no, for the War for Cybertron, definitely check. Um, I Dreamy made some really good comics of this. Uh, it basically this was based on the Dreamwave comic. It was like the beginning of Optimus Prime before he became a Prime, and okay. um, it, yeah, the comic is really good. So if you ever can check out the comic book, those were good. I think they were made by Gene Wave Studios, which I think IW, IW, IDW owns the rights to those books. So you could probably find them on trade still. Oh, so okay, good stuff. And then the second game brought in Grimlock, which that was my favorite one because Grimlock yeah grimlock is my like besides prime grimlock has always been one of my favorite transformers now is he a character that has to be written good to be entertaining or is it just because he's a, a he's a dinosaur robot? he's a dinosaur with a speech impediment <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny um the thing is uh one thing i always liked about especially again what we were talking about the war for cybertron comic book is the fact that he had the speech impediment like he sounded like he was dumb he sounds like a caveman because again he's a robot he's a fucking dinosaur so mm -hmm. they give his characteristics of what he is what he is well, if he turned into a human he would be a caveman because yeah, yeah. so you. he had kind of a speech impediment and like he talked very like aggressive like again like how you did in the comic books like me grimlock you this and i would fight you do this but no one really realized how great of a strategist he was. Oh, he was okay. a really good war strategist, and he wanted the prime, the prime um, title off of Optimus Prime. He didn't think that Optimus Prime deserved it. Really? And in that comic book, Grimlock was a tank. Like I mean, like um, Megatron tank? Yeah, he was like a badass tank. Really? Yeah. That turned into a dinosaur still? He still he had he had like a double turn and then yeah he was a great character and then hmm. um he became the prime for a bit and then he, he then he gave the mantle to prime optimus prime because optimus prime had a better head on the shoulder when it came to dealing with other people as in the grimlock was good with the other people he just knew how to strategize for war okay gotcha it's a really good story wow I, you sold me on grimlock yeah, I love Grimlock. Like Grimlock was always one of my favorite characters. I think he was always under, under underestimated because he sounds stupid, but he wasn't stupid. Gotcha. It's like he's playing stupid just so you, for you to let your guard. Oh, okay, down. I understand. I mean, and, he's a robot. And don't 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 let your guard down on. He's a big motherfucking stupid dude. <laughs> yeah, he's always like a huge dinosaur. He's yeah. always one of the bigger robots. So and he he will slice you in a heartbeat. That's pretty funny. Yeah. Um. Well, I mean, damn, I'm talking about us, unfortunately, about the studio being closed. But I mean, at least you can still find their games, right? Yeah, they're on there. You can find them on the shop on um, Xbox One and the PS4 store. I think they might be on the Game Pass. I'm not sure. I could let you know my next cast. Okay. If they are actually on the Game Pass so that I can actually look at it and see if they are on there. Mm -hmm. um, small segue. Because speaking of the game stores, I checked out. 
they had like a sale last week. Yeah. And I picked up some Star Ocean games because they were ten dollars. Oh, that's not bad. And like I love the, the the ones that I bought are the ones that were my my favorites in the the past few systems because they they there's there's a new Star Ocean on PS4. I hear it's not good at all. Yeah. Shout out sad. shout outs to uh, Flying Grayson, little Steven. Mm-hmm. He loves those. He plays all those games, like all yeah. those RPGs and stuff. That's he's big into them. So yeah, I always get the news from him of how they are and shit. Yeah. Um, so I got uh, Star Ocean till the end of time, which was the third one, mm-hmm. and that was on PS2. And they, you know, did their little bit of work on it. You can see it. Oh lord, the background textures are terrible. They have not aged well, but you can see that they they did work on the character models. Yeah, because they stand out like they really are well drawn, and it kind of makes you realize that's one of the strong points of the game was like the character design. Like, you okay? You know what it what it's like to play like a JRPG and yeah. the difference between a regular character and a background character. Yeah, you know a background character when you see one. Yeah, you've seen that face maybe about three times already. He's wearing the same brown coat that the other yeah. dude in the. And the, and the orphanage was wearing, you know what I mean? Yeah. But this game has a thing where a lot of the smaller characters are individual, like oh. models and stuff. So there's a lot of unique looking, uh, not even super important people, just and it kind of makes most of the cutscenes seem like better. Because it's like everybody seems like an individual, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's one of the weird, because it's such an early game. It's a PS2 game. And it's like at that point, you have to remember like RPGs. Cause it's not a square game and square was on a different level <laughs> just yeah. to be honest Square was on a different level and the last star ocean game was like 2d so they were sprite based and like this is the first foray into 3d and so it's actually pretty good it stands out it, the humor carries over really good which is one thing i was telling a friend of mine earlier i was like i didn't like i was going back to play it and i was like oh this probably wouldn't age well but it's like the graphics are whatever but man the story it holds up like you once you get a certain character in your party like very early in the game there's a that certain dynamic between those you know that character and the main character where it's like this guy's seen so much shit that he doesn't really care about anything and he's always cracking jokes yeah so like he's in the middle of a life-threatening situation he's kind of talking about something that has nothing to do with what's going on or his response is very like days cool it's like the main character's like, what is ma- what is the matter with <laughs> he's freaking out about shit? And it's just like that is portrayed really well in that game. Yeah. And it's just like because the you know, that was the trope of I guess every JRPG was you were some spunky teenager that just got some type of superpowers and stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you're the one who's gonna save the world, blah blah blah. So you know that main thing is no different sorry that's their trope you know it's kind of like a super sentai type thing it's, it is what it is yeah you're gonna put on you're gonna find five four or three people they're gonna put suits on they're gonna fight it's yeah, just it's gonna happen exactly you know what i mean it's gonna happen. <laughs> they're always gonna be teenagers so again it has that trope but i just didn't know that i didn't remember the voice actor being so so it's, it's hit or miss the main character is pretty on point yeah but there's some side characters that are like oh that's not good <laughs> um but like it it really just made me think huh they, they put a lot of work into this didn't they because <laughs> yeah. some of the, the the actions in the cutscenes, it's just like oh you could have cheat that out but you went all in because the characters doing like again it's kind of like a when you think back to what time it was and what you could do with the technology like yeah you didn't have to do all that but you did so okay i can see why this kind of stood out and i don't know i guess i'm gonna finish it up but there's a part of the game that kind of it, it's not bad okay. it's just it can be time consuming because when you get to like this was probably one of the first games that had a a crafting system that lasted it lasted as long as it did because i think it was taking inspiration from mmos and stuff yeah where you could like once you uh, you uh, you reach a certain point in the story you get to unlock the crafting uh, the area, the blacksmith, and all that stuff, and it's like then you have to go through the game with a different mindset, trying to find ore and stuff. It's just like, geez, there's so much to go into this. And then you, but if you do do it, 
there's a special part of the game at the end that if you didn't do any of that stuff the enemies would just straight kill you yeah. so like i like that there's a reason to do all this stuff but it's like it takes a long time it really does i don't know if i'm gonna do that shit. But there's another way to like download somebody safe <laughs> at the end of the game when i'm done maybe i'll do that is there a game genie for ps4 no i wish i missed game genie ah uh, basically they let you cheat bring games now you can they probably they probably sell you game genie as a fucking monthly subscription <laughs> right <laughs> For the payments oh, for, for the new codes. Oh god, I need to pay every month to have access to my cheats. Oh, fuck. so um, yeah, I'm looking at the, the the sale on PS4 anyway. Uh, they had Devil May Cry for forty dollars, forty bucks. Devil May Cry Five. Oh yeah, that, that actually they announced that because there's a new. Um, if you bought the game, uh, you get access to another DLC hand for Nero, a oh. Devil Bringer. The banana hand, I think it is. I forgot what it's called. <laughs> it's literally a hand made out of bananas. I guess I gotta turn the game back on. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. Um, still fun. I mean, I don't know if they're gonna do. The, again, there were the articles saying that they're not doing any more DLC. Yeah. But hey, listen, they did some. Um, and the other Capcom news, they they announced the Iceborne DLC date. Yeah. And then they had like a special presentation that I watched. And I was telling my friend, I was like, yo, man, this shit is dry as hell. <laughs> like it was them translate sitting there translating over over what the people were saying. Yeah. And it was just like, I feel like I'll be eating a man-made sandwich. This is so bland. <laughs> it was just the most just hello. Welcome to our presentation. It almost was like, okay, have you seen Nintendo's presentations late lately? Yeah. Where they have the president standing in one spot. Yeah. And then he'll do a gesture, um, and snap yeah. his fingers or something really calm. And then it'll just go, hello. And then some disembodied voice will start telling you about the product in a very calm voice. Yeah. And it's almost the same exact type of thing. And it's just like, what is this? What Japan, what are you doing? We can handle your humor. Because I'd love to see uh, Monster Hunter presented as a wacky game show. Yeah. Where, like, uh, Rathalos pooping on somebody's head or something. You know what I mean? Like, something stupid. But, again, we're not going to get that. But what we got was a, a, a breakdown of most of the features of the Iceborne DLC. They showed, I think it was, like, three new monsters. Uh, and one monster that was returning from an old game. Um, the Nagakuga, which is one of my favorites. It's like a big black cat with red stripes on it. And when it gets pissed off, it shakes its tail like a rattlesnake. Okay. And then like it shoots spikes. At it. It's again, it's Monster Hunter. It doesn't make sense, but it's, yeah. it, it just looks cool. That's kind of the, the theme of it. Um, they show that thing running around. They show they show pictures of not actually in action of the new Elder Dragon, which is the, the, the cover monster yeah um this one with like some giant horns and then uh another one that like is basically a reskin of another monster like so they basically covered all the bases there's an actual new monster there's some they showed actual physical new monsters they showed the ones that people are like oh that's just another variant of that and then they they brought back an old old monster so a legacy monster basically mm-hmm. Um, and then introduced the new, uh, they, ca- they have a name for them. Like the, 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 the monster that's on the cover of Monster Hunter World, the one with the spikes. Yeah. yeah. Like they call that something. They call it like, the, not, I don't, it's not just the cover monster. It has like a different term for Monster Hunter, but that's what the Elder Dragon is for this new expansion. Um, the, the date for it is supposed to be September 6th, which is... Actually, like something else is supposed to come out around that time. I forget what, but September six is not that not that far away. Four months, less yeah. than four months actually. Um, and they said if you buy it separately, it's gonna be forty bucks. But at this time, I'm not sure. I think it does come with Monster Hunter built in, so that's, that's pretty cool. cool. That's cool. So I think it's cheaper, obviously, if you get if you have the game already. Because they said this is a, a separate way to purchase it. 
and they actually announced like physical editions of it and everything so there's going to be like a few different things i think there is like some pre-order bonus if you pre-order it you get like this silver armor okay for the the skins and stuff which is whatever and there's the throwback to the i think it's monster hunter hmm, freedom unite okay. is uh the, the samurai looking armor it's something called yukumo it's like if you play the game you know what it is basically um and that's about it but they showed the, the the cool thing about it that i'm interested in is they showed an upgrade to the combat system so it's not just the same game again yeah with new areas they actually upgraded the stuff you can do and now they can now they've concentrated on the grapple so now you can grapple directly on the monster's face like well they showed the face so you can you can grapple on the face and hit it in the head and that'll make it run in a straight line so you can direct it into a trap so i'm like oh okay so they're experimenting with different types of things that you can do when you mount them so i'm interested to see because they show that every weapon can do it and they're also doing this thing where they're changing up some of the items let you uh some of the items are just straight up able to be used without putting the weapon away and there's like oh there's a whole bunch of other cool things there's a, the whole uh thing about the what is it called it's the part that shoots out the, the the bombs you usually strap onto your arm. Yeah. And there's like there's a whole new combat system where during the middle of moves and stuff you'll be able to. Sh- yeah. What they show with the gray sword is like the way that it affects this weapon is now you'll be able to in the middle of a charge, pop out a flash bomb and stop something from hitting you, and then maintain the momentum of the charge you had so you'll go into the next animation. And it's like oh that's that's very intuitive and i didn't i didn't even think to do that but it's pretty cool so i'd like to see what they're doing it's like i kind of feel now like this is where dragon's dogma 2 went yeah <laughs> some of the tech went into this game but i hear that's like that's the next game for the other guy um the dmc5 guy like his next project should be dragon's dogma 2 i hope so mm-hmm. i hope so did you ride on the switch um did i get it no i didn't I recommend it. If you never played it, I recommend it. What is it called again? Dragon's Dogma. No, I haven't played uh, it. I Darker, sort of Darker Darker I meant to play it on the Xbox when the first came out, the B60. You Dude, know what? You, the, the, the Switch one, they said it runs pretty good. I recommend it on there because it has the, the, the expansion that okay. made a lot of things more tolerable, a lot of the streamlined, a lot of little things. That's a game you would like. You would. Huh. You would yeah, if you had some time to play it, you would like that. Yeah, and that's something I like about the Switch. Is there's something on the go, so there's something that I always kill time with, so it I have time to play. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, more, I, it's a little more fun because it's tuned to one player than Monster Hunter. Yeah. I would say, and that, that you might like more about it. It's got the giant monster aspect to it, but it's also kind of scary when, it, when it's dark outside. Like, there's a lot of little things to that game. And, like, okay. you would, yeah, you would like that. I definitely gotta check it out. Um, speaking of Switch, I picked up Saints Row the Third on Switch. And how is it? Is it pretty good? Um, well, if actually if you buy it now, like if you buy it through the Switch online, I think you get 15 percent off on the game. Oh, good. It is forty dollars, which mm-hmm. I'm kind of annoyed that I paid another thirty dollars for this game, but it's fun. It plays just like the third one on Xbox 360. That's probably one of my favorite 360 games. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the first games I fully like. 100 percent it like trophy and everything so yeah i i love that game that game was so funny so yeah, it's fun. funny and oh, it's did just... you hear that they're gonna make a they want to make a saints row movie yeah i'm not crazy about the movie because i don't think it's gonna be i don't think it's gonna be taken as not taken as seriously like i want like it, like i don't want itself to take take itself seriously because mm. the game is funny. The game is like a parody of what Grand Theft Auto is. It's not trying to be a Grand Theft Auto. It's, go- it's going out and like going over the boundary of it. And I think I, that's the thing I like about that. Oh, see, I don't know because the director is the guy from The Fate of the Furious, which I know you haven't seen. It's yeah. one of those movies. <laughs> and straight out of Compton. And I don't, I don't know what to think because that means, one, he has experience with some of the genre yeah because it's a basically 
Saints Row Incorporated, all that dumb, stupid, you know, all that stupid stuff. Yep. The gangster stuff, West Coast stuff was in two. Mm -hmm. The car stuff was in basically all of them. Yeah. And the Fast and Furious kind of was in two. I mean, three. three. Some of the dumb stuff they did. Um, So I don't know, maybe, but like, I don't know how that guy does. That the, the brand of humor of Saints Row is like, it's pretty unique, man. It's like, like I, I don't want it to be just a regular gangster movie. And I think that's it what's can't be. It can't I think that's be. what's going to be. And that's, I, that's what it's like. Eh, I don't care. I it. don't I don't think it's going to be regular, but I don't know if they're going to hit the nail on the head with the humor because yeah. it's a specific thing. Don't forget, Saints Row is a game where the main character is basically you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I don't know how they're going to do that. Um, they did announce uh, they teased uh, part five coming too. Really? Yeah. Oh man, that means they. That means who was it? Do you know if it's still gonna be Volition? Yeah. Really? Oh, and it's still so it's still it's still them running the company. They just under a different name. Uh, I'm just happy because I, Ages of May Ages of Mayhem did not do good. Yeah, but I think Saints Row. I, I, honestly, I didn't. I, I wasn't crazy about Saints Row Four either. It's not my favorite, but it's not bad. No, it wasn't bad. It was a fun game. Like I like the fact that it made fun of like Mass Effect and shit like that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I just felt it like there was no point of having all the cars and stuff in the game because you have all these powers. You don't need it. Yeah, the powers. And and I think three did it perfectly, as in they gave you the powers, but it was only in one mission and mm -hmm. things like that. But the rest you had to use the cars, you had to get the updates and things like that. And I think they they did everything pretty well in that sense. My favorite part of three was when you can were you hallucinating or was that the end of that sequence? When you turn into the toilet? Yeah, you're hallucinating. Yeah. That part may have me die. When you were back in the city and you were the toilet running around the street, I'm like, am I stuck like this? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll take it, but <laughs> that was pretty funny. So yeah, Saints Row three in particular I liked a lot. But I'm one of the people that really liked two. Yeah. Cause a lot of because it had a lot of the things that got better in three yeah but they were still just ridiculous i love the spraying people with the poop trout yeah <laughs> that's so dumb and in the fighting the the corporation which is street gangsters yeah and by the end of the game you're flying like hover jets and st it, it was a dumb game in the best way yeah i did like two a lot i think yeah. two, and three. two and yeah, three two and three are my favorite ones yeah overall is my favorite one two did not perform well and i recommend like the pc one yeah or the upscale one because i think you can play it on the xbox like the yeah. you play on the new systems yeah so i wouldn't recommend playing the old one it didn't perform as good as, as people might have thought it did mm -mm. it's had slow down it's a fun game like it being a movie i'm not i'm not i'm like uh maybe not yeah we'll see I, we can only hope right hopefully sonic the hedgehog will Open the doors for everybody to make. Well, Detective Pikachu. <laughs> well, this is true. But I'm it, talking about the ones that we don't know. Because Detective Pikachu, I think we all knew it was going to at least be entertaining. It's, good. It, it's, it's, it's actually getting good reviews right now. Yeah. It came um, out this weekend. Yes. Um, shout out to a lot of the fans on Twitter. Like the um, people I'm following and whatnot. They're putting up their impressions and stuff. And like, generally from the fans, I'm hearing good stuff, which is a good thing. It's so like, okay. They got something right. Yep. I'm happy. I'm going to see it Tuesday morning. Gotcha, gotcha. I can't wait to see it. I heard a lot of good funny things about it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there's something else I want to say. I yeah, I see it now. Same as Row 5, D Silver, teasing. Yep. And, um, okay. yeah, talking about the sales, Ubisoft has a publisher sale on PS4 and Xbox as well. Okay. Um... What does that mean? Assassin's Creed and all that? All their oh. games are pretty much all their main games are on sale. Okay. So Odyssey, I might actually pick up Odyssey. Gotcha. Because I didn't get to play and I heard a lot of good things about Odyssey. Mm, yeah, me too. I heard it's a, a big investment though. That's why not. Yeah. <laughs> but I hear there's a, I hear that's not a not a that game they did not skip on the content. They, yeah. There's a bunch of shit that game. So um, Judgment. It's right around the corner, and I can't wait. Oh man! Did I you see the thing on Twitter? I just posted on Twitter of the skateboard. Oh no, 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 I didn't see the skateboard one. So the one where he was hiding around the corner. They they've been putting up a lot of stuff, which is actually pretty good. Yeah, I can't wait. Um, yeah, I posted the skateboard one. I meant to tag you. I don't think I tagged you. Um, 
Yeah, the dude was chasing him with a golf cart, and, no, like a pipe, and he swings, and you're on a skateboard, and it's like a lot of the like, quick time events, and he's still riding the skateboard throughout the whole city and shit, which is pretty, pretty cool. Oh man, that's pretty good. Yes. <laughs> this game looks a lot of fun, I can't wait. I gotta finish six. I need, I need to finish six. Yeah, I'm actually, I think like a third of the way through Kiwami 2. Yeah. Yeah, it's still a good fun, uh, a really good fun game. Like, I love that game. So much of the side quests are hilarious. Too many I'm, else, actually. Yeah. I'm thinking going back and um, playing Zero again, though. You know what? Um, why don't you get Zero on PC? <laughs> I don't have a good PC. Ow. Yeah. Sadly, I don't have a good PC. I don't have a Jenkins PC. <laughs> See, Jenkins should, should do himself some homework and buy uh, Yakuza Zero. Yeah, he, he should. Play that game. Finish that. He needs to stop playing these games that come out once in a, in a blue moon. Talk about, we're going to change the world. Listen, Anthem, sorry. He couldn't do it. Mass Effect Andromeda, we knew it was dead in the water. We just wanted to hold on to a dream. But Yakuza Zero is forever. Just say. That's what the zero is. Infinity. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's about it. I mean, yeah, so I, only I, got, got it. I only got one more thing. This is just in the life department. So, uh, Governor Doug Ducey, apparently uh, governor in Arizona, he is lifting the legal restrictions around owning nunchucks. Did you know that owning nunchucks was illegal? I had no idea. Yeah, it was illegal since the 80s. They are on a list of deadly weapons. <laughs> the nunchucks apparently are deadly weapons. Now listen, this is this is actually um, acknowledgement that the Foot Clan is indeed a deadly organization. Yeah. <laughs> so apparently, when in a few years, when you hear that the Foot Clan has appeared in Arizona, you know why. And turtles don't do that. It's that heat shit. So. Oh wow! They're gonna take over the Foot Clan. Is gonna take over Arizona. Yeah, that's how they're gonna get so strong. Like, why are they? How are there so many members? They'll they take all over. Had <laughs> they all gonna take over the the desert parts of the United <laughs> States <laughs> with their oh, ninjas. They're just gonna make the desert look like a giant foot. Oh man! So talk about Detective Pikachu. Okay. Um, Ryan Reynolds himself posted mm-hmm. a full movie of of the take a Pikachu on YouTube. And when you go on and go watch it, you actually see the beginning of the movie. It feels like it's actually the beginning of the movie. Mm-hmm. And it goes right into Pikachu dancing for like an hour and 40 minutes. Wow. That's <laughs> pretty good. What quality is it in? Uh, it's like a 1080. It's like the highest quality. That means he had to sit there and let that render for yeah. hours. And it's just him dancing in a in like a gymna- like an eighties gymnastic gym and shit. Oh my god, that's pretty good. <laughs> Hour forty minutes. Jeez. I was like, yo, if he's actually just playing this the whole time, and I went all the way to hour forty minutes, and I was like, oh shit, <laughs> it's like all what? the whole what time. A, that is a dedication to his craft. He is a professional troll. <laughs> Between him and Big E, those are like my favorite two trolls right now. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to shout out to Big E. Uh, professional troll if you he was like what's his service he's on some some um a website was it some uh, camera thing yeah uh, cameo so you can yeah uh, he's like your biggies or cameo if you want to have hire him for birthdays a bar mitzvahs or whatever celebrations to 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 harass your mama in a towel (laughs) (laughs) so that's hilarious though did you saw the picture of him with the um it lay down in the new day, the new day outfit with the the iPad. Yeah, with the gloves on. Uh-huh. Oh my god, <laughs> so good. It's too, he's too good. The only thing I love is that Becky Lynch is just like cracking up the whole time through the shit. Uh huh. Uh huh. Lean into. It. Lean yeah. into. It. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, everything he's done. Him and Tyler Breeze been going back and forth too. It's just been funny shit. <laughs> It's really funny stuff. Oh, gotcha. you. Wow. So yeah, like, this is what he does when he's injured. He can't do much, so he's he's gonna talk, man. He's gonna talk. He's gonna talk shit. Oh, he's, gonna, he's gonna make you think online. 
to make you question yourself. He has one of someone punching the wall because of the EA servers. Wow. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah, man. He's coming back for that up, up, down, down championship. Well, tell me what you what you said earlier about the already there was a challenge for Jack Gallagher's championship. Oh, yeah. Buddy Murphy challenged him for the up, up, down. I didn't get to finish the video, oh, so no, I don't no know problem. who actually won. We don't want to spoil but, it. It's okay. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, the up up down down championship is being defended by uh jack gallagher so every person he's gonna defeat he's gonna have a poem after the defeat that's okay. what jack gallagher said okay. so he had one for mikazi wow okay <laughs> that's interesting jack gallagher is great and he's so good in ufc so that yeah was he really is pick. yeah but gotcha. the biggie is another one that's surprisingly really good in ufc Mm, okay. He don't play no other game, but in UFC, he's actually really good. Gotcha. So, let's see. Let's All see right. what Good stuff. <clears throat> um, before we wrap it up, shout out to the Velveteen Dream. <laughs> shout out to the Velveteen Dream for posting takeover moments Yeah. today and yesterday. Takeover, takeover moment number 19. The Dream has no memory of that. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he that's what he, he posted it as a 12 hour he's going through like all the, the outfits and stuff for the takeover moments yeah. so it's really cool um shout outs to arc systems system works excuse me um there's a new game coming out new fighting game coming out uh grand blue fantasy versus okay um it's interesting because i recommend i, I recommend it to, to you mark if you like guilty gear if you like how it okay. looks um they just introduced a new character uh who is wrestling theme okay like super wrestling theme like he has an intro he comes with a rough i think yeah um he has his own federation <laughs> like and this is i don't know what the story of this of the show is yeah. um his name is fastiva it's okay. interesting he looks like he looks like if kenny omega became the king okay of like i don't know pick your one of your favorite anime but if he became the king okay. remember it's kenny omega so he's got the long hair yeah semi flamboyant outfit but with the the cool cape i guess on his on his ring attire when he comes into the ring his little intro gear but he fights with his belt on okay so and his moves are hilarious cool yeah i think actually one of his one of his supers he pins you wow all yeah. right that's pretty cool. Yeah, this is um, the other reason I bring this up is because oh, he has a cutter. Wow, what? The other reason I bring this up is because I uh, hopefully when they put it up on PS4, I'll get an email saying I was let into the beta because they're going to do a beta, I think, the 30th of this okay. month. So I'll let you know again. Like, I'm excited because it's the Guilty Gear people and they okay. make good ass fighting games. So yeah, they did Dragon Ball. Yeah, so I'm definitely interested in seeing what what happens with this game because it's gonna be a you know I don't know this the again I don't know what Grand Blue Fantasy is, mm -hmm. but to me it's like a fresh take a character I've never seen him before so I don't know who any of these characters are, but seeing it that they have this really diverse cast already, and then there's a dude that does cutters and pile drivers and all that in a Guilty Gear game. All right, let's go. <laughs> So, yep, look out for that. Hopefully, you'll see me getting beat up online next week or something. I mean, not two two weeks. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, um, I, so I watched uh, last thing, watched Cobra Kai, uh, season two. Really fucking good. Did that just that just come out? Uh, yeah, season two just got released. Okay, cool. So if you know Cobra Kai, it's part of the Karate Kid. Um, mm -hmm. original series of Karate Kid is kind of a continuation like 20 years later uh, definitely check it out it's actually a really good show gotcha and what's uh, what service is on it's on YouTube Red so YouTube gotcha. TV. yeah it's a YouTube okay. show yep cool beans um, well that's it for this week's episode yep. thanks for listening um, make sure you check us out uh, Red Cyclonic on everything we are on Twitter Tumblr Instagram, um, YouTube, SoundCloud, and WordPress. And all of those is our Red Cyclone Inc. 
um, capital R, capital C, capital I. You know what it is. Yeah. Where you at, Mark? Uh, follow me on all my social medias. On I'm on Facebook with the recycling page and the Resting Babble. I'm really uh, very vocal on there, so definitely check that out. Check out me out on Twitter, Instagram, uh, YouTube, SoundCloud, Twitch TV, on and Tumblr with Mark with the mic. And uh, last but not least, happy Mother's Day to all the beautiful mamas that listen to this cast, or our mamas and every mama, yes, yes, yes. all the mama mums. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Yes. And Big E likes your moms. <laughs> Becky Lynch, watch out. <laughs> You're going to be Don't your be. New, new stepdaughter. Yep, yep. Becky E. Langston. <laughs> she already knows what it is. <laughs> she already knows. Um, I said, she deserves those pops. Yep. Those two bell pops, like you said. What's, what's that? Let's get it going. She already has two pops coming. 2020. Give it a two belts. She has the man pop, and then she has a uh, regular costume pop. Okay, good stuff. And no the Ambrose, which pisses me the fuck off. Hey. Anyway, he's out. Peace okay. out, laters, and always remember: follow Jenkins. Those sandwiches. Drop them.